Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we start Unit 6. This video is going to cover everything you need to know about Unit 6, Topic 1 of AP Psychology, the lifespan and physical development in childhood. Now throughout this unit we are going to be talking about the different physical and social developments that occur in a person's life. We'll talk about the different parenting styles and their impact on children and much more. But before we get into any of that we have to go back to the beginning. And no, this video is not going to be starting with the birds and the bees talk. So we can see that when women are born they're born with all their immature eggs. After a woman goes through puberty, the women's eggs mature and the ovaries release the mature eggs. So, Men, on the other hand, are not born with all their sperm. In fact, they don't start producing sperm cells until puberty. When conception happens, a mature egg becomes fertilized. The egg is now known as a zygote, which is a fertilized egg. Once this happens, the egg goes through rapid cell division, at first producing over 100 identical cells, but eventually the cells start to differentiate. This leads to specific structures and functions in the future. This time period is known as the germinal stage. During this stage, the sex is determined. The sex is determined by the father. Women have two X chromosomes in their cells, and men have an X and a Y chromosome. If the father contributes an X chromosome, the child will be a girl. And if the father contributes a Y chromosome, it will be a boy. During the germinal stage, we can also see chromosomal changes and mutations occur in the zygote, which could lead to genetic disorders such as Down syndrome to occur. This is believed to be caused when abnormal cell division involving chromosome 21 occurs. At the end of this stage, around 10 days after conception, the zygote will attach to the mother's uterine wall. As the zygote develops, its inner cells become an embryo, and the outer cells start to become the placenta. The placenta is what allows for the transfer of oxygen and nutrients to go from the mother to the embryo. Once the placenta is formed, the baby will have access to anything the mother ingests. This is where different environmental influences can have a larger impact on the development of the child. During the germinal stage, the zygote was not at a high risk of being influenced by environmental influences. Since since the placenta was not formed, but now in the embryonic stage, the mother needs to be careful of what they breathe in, drink, and eat. It is important that the mother does not ingest any teratogens during her pregnancy. A teratogen is a harmful substance that can cause birth defects or abnormalities in a developing embryo or fetus. Alcohol would be an example of a teratogen, which if ingested during pregnancy could lead to neurological and physical impairments. Drinking alcohol while pregnant can also lead to fetal alcohol syndrome, which can cause physical and cognitive abnormalities in a child. As development continues, the embryo starts to form different functions, and over the next six weeks, organs will start to form. This is known as the embryotic stage. By the end of this stage, the heart begins to beat and organs are being formed. Around nine weeks, we move into the fetal stage. This is when the embryo is now considered a fetus. During this stage, the baby will see their toes and fingers grow, develop lungs, and start to see their stomach form. During this stage, the baby will experience development with everything they need to survive outside of the womb. Now, one concept that I want to highlight is the nature versus nurture debate. Throughout this unit, you'll see different examples of how nature impacts the development of an individual and how nurture impacts the development of an individual. Remember that we as people are not formed by just one of these concepts. Both of them impact us in different ways. We can see nature when looking on at the passing of different genetic traits, but we can also see nurture when we're looking at how culture treats pregnancy, what type of foods we eat, and how we view the sex of the baby. Now this video was just an introduction into childhood. In our next video, we're going to be looking at social developments in childhood. But before before we go on to the next topic, let's review what we learned. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that next video. And if you need more help with AP Psychology, check out my ultimate review packet. I say it at the end of every video, but trust me, it will help you with your A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you online.